Shoes. Everyone needs shoes. Well, almost everyone. They come in all different colours and shapes, designed for a variety of uses. But what is it that sets a good shoe apart from the rest? How it looks, whether it fits right. There's a place in the heart of Austria that has been dedicated to making shoes by hand for generations and has been producing extraordinary shoes for decades now. The smell of new shoes literally fills the air here. And if we look a little closer, we can find them everywhere we turn. But who is it that actually makes them? The shoemakers must be around here somewhere. After all, the shoes can't just fall from the sky. Let's take a closer look. Maybe we'll discover a few secrets along the way. Like anyone who appreciates a good pair of shoes, we are magically drawn further and further along until we finally get to the small town of Kopfing. That's where the Think Shoe Factory is located. Let's take a peek inside. important thing of all to remember when designing a shoe is that shoes serve one main purpose. They help us walk. And without them, we wouldn't get very far in life. It all begins with the first drawing, starting with a sketch of the basic shape and special details. The next step is to transfer the sketch to a plastic model of the last. This is done to see whether the design will work out or not and it gives the designer a sense of proportion for the first time. Now the individual parts that will be needed are drawn onto a basic model. So, onto a 2D printout of a last. The red lines represent the individual leather parts that will be needed to make the shoe. This information then has to be turned into digital data because even in the shoe industry, computers are essential these days. Once the basic model has been converted to digital form, the various blanks for all the different sizes can be generated automatically. These data are then used to create the punching tool for the next stage of production. During punching, the individual parts of the shoe are cut out of large leather hides. Each leather hide has a different shape and different characteristics. Once the punching tool is positioned on the leather, a press is used to cut out the individual parts under high pressure. It takes years of experience to know which part of the leather will work best for which part of the shoe. After all, the different sections of leather vary in terms of their flexibility and stability. The punched out parts are like the basic building blocks that will be used to create the shoe. In the next stages, the parts are prepared to be sewn together. First, lines are drawn in that will serve as a guide later for sewing. This is done with the help of paper templates, with the exact same shape as the leather pieces that have been punched out. Each of the leather pieces is marked with a silver pen so that the sewer knows exactly where the individual parts should meet and be sewn together. In the next stage, some of the outer edges of the leather pieces need to be skived using a machine. Skiving simply refers to making the leather thinner in some places. The reason why skiving is so important is that the places where the leather is sewn together later would otherwise be too thick when the pieces overlap. Then the shoe would pinch the feet, and that is exactly what we don't want. Next, 
Thin strips of fabric are applied as reinforcements to some of the outer edges that will be stress points later. After all, leather is a natural material and in contrast to artificially manufactured materials, it doesn't always behave the way we might want it to. Leather lives, breathes and changes shape even after being processed. A layer of fabric made of 100% cotton is then ironed onto the reinforced skived leather parts. The fabric has a resin dot coating that allows it to remain breathable. The high temperatures of the laminator activates the resin to make the fabric stick to the leather. With the help of the interlining, the leather parts remain movable and flexible for a long time, but they also retain their original shape. During the sewing stage, the individual leather parts are attached to each other. We can see here how the split upper, which is a special design feature of this shoe, is being sewn together with a stay seam. After being sewn together, the two parts now lie flat on top of each other. Adhesive tape is used to anchor the parts in place as they are pressed into shape by being rolled through a machine. Finally, a decorative seam is sewn on parallel to the actual seam. After that, the outer leather. So the distinctive leather covering the outside of the shoe is complete. During the lining process, the inner lining, which has already been prepared and is made up of many individual parts, is glued onto the outer leather. This temporary fastening is a necessary step before the parts are sewn together later. It is only at this point that the two individual parts become the finished upper part of the shoe. Now we can see just how thick the shoe actually is. The top stitching machine is then used to perform two steps at once. First, the inner lining is sewn to the outer lining so that they are permanently fixed together. And second, at the same time, the inner lining is trimmed by a vibrating blade that simply cuts off the excess leather of the lining. The inner lining had to be made slightly larger because only once the outer leather and inner lining are placed on top of each other can we determine the exact size needed for the inner lining. To make the toe cap of the shoe as stable and durable as possible, a fabric covered plastic part now needs to be inserted. This kind of plastic cup is a permanently flexible element. That may sound complicated, but it's actually quite simple. It just means that it can change shape under stress, but then always returns to its original form. The inner lining of the toe cap is glued on using latex milk and then sewn on. The front part of the shaft is now finished, so the only thing left to do is finish the back. In order to make the heel more stable as well, a heel cap is inserted between the outer leather and the inner lining. This ensures that the foot remains stable in the shoe. To attach the cap, the shaft is placed on a heated aluminium last, along with the inserted cap. The heat from below and the pressure from the air cushion above cause the heel cap to become attached to the leather. This means that the cap becomes permanently incorporated between the inner lining and the outer leather, and the shaft is now completely finished. Now it's time to move on to the sole, and first we need to do some lasting. The insole, which is a kind of inner sole, is attached to the correct last using two staples. Then the shaft and the sole are pulled over the last to give the shoe its actual shape. The lasting machine uses lots of little grippers to evenly stretch the upper over the last. Then glue is automatically applied to the insole from below and high pressure is used to attach the insole to the upper shaft. The heel leather is also stretched and this time not just glued but also nailed onto the insole. 
And finally, the staples are removed. It's almost starting to look like a finished shoe now. Before the rubber sole can be attached, excess leather left over from lasting needs to be removed from the bottom of the shoe. This is very important because we need to have a flat surface to glue to the sole so that the glue can sink in well. First, the last is sanded to get rid of the large pieces of leather that are left over. And then the leather needs to be roughened again so that the glue that is applied later can be absorbed as deeply as possible into the leather fibers. Now the two parts that belong together can become one. The finished last and a suitable sole are coated with glue. First, with a thin pre-coat that can sink deep into the leather fibers. And after drying for a short time, with a second, thicker glue. The sole is also coated with glue, but the glue on both parts needs to dry completely before work can continue. The glued surfaces need to be heated up because they can only be firmly attached to one another when they are warm. The sole has to be fitted carefully to the last by hand because it expands during heating and will shrink again when it cools off. Finally, the last is placed in the sole press. Here, the air gets extracted, which creates a vacuum so that the sole becomes permanently attached to the last. Finished at last. Or not quite. Before the last can be taken out, any glue residue on the shoe has to be removed. This is done with the help of a rotating horsehair brush. Once the glue has hardened completely, it can no longer be removed without leaving behind any traces. Now the last can finally be removed. A hinge on the inside of the last is opened so that the last can be folded up and the shoe can be removed quite easily. The shoe is finally finished and is even ready to be tried on. The only thing left to do to ensure that the shoe makes the perfect first impression is the finish. First, the shoe is heated up with warm air, which incinerates any leftover threads or frayed leather and the toe cap and heel briefly become malleable again. A hammer is used to get rid of any edges that could press on the foot in the future. Finally, the shoe is polished with shoe cream and equipped with an inserted sole. Then the shoe is wrapped in tissue paper and packed away. And finally, it's time to set off into the big, wide world. Welcome to the world of Think. Healthy shoes, naturally beautiful.